Hello my fellow paint monsters, how are you doing today? My name is Aga and this is Hungry for Paint, a channel about handmade watercolour paints. Today I want to show you some watercolours from Penholder Art, made by Dan in the UK. Dan has been incredibly generous and has sent me quite a lot of colours to try out. Some of the colours you're going to see today I've bought quite a while ago. I've been working with them ever since and one of them is my absolute favourite. Dan keeps it simple when it comes to packaging, which I'm absolutely fine with. Every colour comes with its name written on it. You get some swatch cards, which on the other side have some information about the paint, including the pigments used to make the paint, light fastness information and so on. You can also find pigment information on Dan's website. I live in the EU, so one of the things I liked were the low shipping costs, comparing to makers from the United States. Now, on to the swatches. The first colour on the first page, Malachite. This is my favourite. It might look unassuming at first glance, but for me it's quite magical. It shifts between brown, green, it can create texture and depth. It looks very natural. It's not incredibly opaque, it layers quite well. It's a bit quirky because of this colour change, but that's precisely what makes me love it. It needs quite a lot of water and quite a lot of time to rewet properly. Uh, and I'm talking about several minutes at least. So you need to put quite a lot of water on top of it, on top of the pan, and wait for about five, maybe 10 minutes, and then you're good to go. If you try to use it too soon, you're going to see that the color is very pale and you won't be able to pick up too much of it with your paintbrush. So just, if that happens, give it more time. The next color, Verdigris, is also quite quirky. It granulates quite heavily. It's got these uh, tiny bluish green particles, specks, that you can see uh, quite clearly. It's got a bit of a brownish undertone. It does have, to me, this kind of a mineral natural look. That Dan tells me it's synthetic, so that's interesting because it feels and it behaves slightly like a mineral paint or a paint made out of a rock or a semi-precious gemstone, but actually it's synthetic. And here we also have this color change from a brownish color when the layer is thin and when the paint is diluted and you can build up the layers to get quite an intense and dark green. Penholder Blue looks and behaves pretty much uh, like an ultramarine, but it doesn't granulate as heavily as normally I'm used to ultramarines granulating. It layers very well, it disperses easily in the water. And the next color again is something uh, very unique, it's malt. So it's actually not a classical pigment, it's glass basically. It resembles lapis lazuli from the way it looks. It granulates very heavily. It also needs quite a lot of time to rewet properly. It is a bit sticky to the touch and uh, under your brush. Personally, I don't have any problem with it whatsoever. And probably this is also what makes it stick to the paper marvelously. Now I can say this about all of them Spain's I've tried so far, they stay where you put them. They're not going to stain or transfer to uh, the neighboring pages of your sketchbook. They're not going to rub off, so the binder is really, really strong. Depending on the type of paper you use, uh, smalt might look slightly shiny when it dries. It happened to me on very thin uh, cotton caddy paper in the logbook, and it happened to me to a slight degree on the Archie's cotton cold press paper that I use for my swatches, but I didn't notice any shine on different kinds of cotton paper, on more textured uh, caddy paper, and also I tried these paints on cellulose paper, watercolor and mixed media both, and there's no shiny surface whatsoever. The zircons, zircon blue and zircon red, are again some of my favorites. They granulate a lot, they create a very visible texture. It's not easy to get a flat wash with them, but if you're looking for a bit of texture, they're going to work perfectly. If you use zircon blue and dilute it with a lot of water, it's going to create a beautiful sky. These feel uh, a little bit sticky on the paintbrush, so you need to move them around a little bit more than most other paints, but I would not say they're particularly difficult to work with. They just have a slightly different feel. But personally, I'm totally okay with that.
Jarosite is probably uh, the smoothest version of Jarosite I've experienced so far. If you soak it properly before you use it, it's very easy to work with. It layers very nicely and it just stays where you put it. I really like Dusk. It's uh, very dark, pretty smooth and it layers marvelously. And even though I'm not a big fan of pinks, Ultramarine Rose, in my opinion, uh, is quite special. It's very nice. I can imagine myself using it more than any other pink. And Pyro Orange looks fiery, looks absolutely fiery. It's very intense, but it's transparent. It's very good for glazing and I imagine it's going to mix beautifully. But this I'm going to show you next week in the demonstration color mixing video. And the last color, Memento Mori, is our good old Caput Mort tomb. It's pretty much what you would expect from it. It's very nice and it's got a very wide range of values. So summing up, the watercolors from them, from Penholder Art, are very pigmented. The binder is incredibly strong. You're not going to have any problems with these paints transferring to other pages in your sketchbook or rubbing off. Mostly they're quite easy to work with. Some of them require a longer rewetting time and a little bit more water. And some of these paints feel a little bit sticky. Well, I, I suppose it's just their quirk. Dan mostly offers single pans. He might add an extra dot sample to your order. And generally, Dan doesn't do palettes. He doesn't do sets. So you get to mix and match and pick your own. Okay, this is it for today. I'm going to see you on Wednesday on Hungry for Paint on Instagram for a preview of the next video, uh, which is going to come next Friday and it's going to be a demonstration and color mixing video using paints from Penholder Art. After that video is published, I'm also going to post a text review uh, of these paints on Hungry for Paint blog. You can find all the links in the description of this video, by the way. And if you find my videos useful, press the like button, leave a small comment below, and you can also consider supporting Hungry for Paint on coffee. Thank you for watching, have a great Friday, and see you next week. Bye bye!